<laughs> We've hit peak 2019. I love it. Welcome to the Mouthpiece, episode 27, year one. Today, we are going to talk about, well, whatever. We're going to talk about what's going on this week. Impeachment hearings, democratic debates, poker, uh, sports, whatever you want to talk about. Plus, we're going to take our phone calls here on the Mouthpiece. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Mouthpiece, episode 27, year one. We have had a very interesting week. In Vegas, it's kind of been raining all week, and when it rains, uh, yours truly, Mike, is in a lot of pain because the barometric pressure drops so much. It's kind of like when I fly. Uh, Every time I fly the day I fly, I can't get out of bed because the pressure expands and... and, um, subtracts on my spinal cord which causes a lot of pain so this week it's been uh extremely painful week to me uh i uh, was able to get out of the house on wednesday uh i was gonna go play two 400 mix uh i got there and the last seat was full and um there was no seat for me and i decided to play 40 80 hold them uh the 4080 limit hold them was was really a great game and it was it was a good time to to catch up uh with some people that i hadn't seen in a long time uh mark safe was in the game i hadn't seen mark safe in years we talked a lot and uh my good friend jeff shulman well we used to be really good friends but we you know we had a falling out but we're, we're kind of working on our relationship and hopefully we'll be good friends again uh me and jeff used to be best friends and we were talking about a lot of things and uh it was pretty funny uh uh how the game was just insane and i uh i had uh four pocket pairs in a row that flopped the set and i lost three of them and won the minimum on the other one uh, I then made the nut flush twice in a row and ran into a full house, which I didn't pay off. And then was a really funny hand against Mark Safe. Mark Safe limps. I raise Ace King. Every this is like the only hand everybody folds, and uh, he calls. And the flop comes Ace King Queen, and he leads out. And I looked at him and I said, you know, the old Mike would just take this hand and throw it in the muck. I said, but we are playing 40-80, so I call, right? And then the turn comes like a three, and he bets out again, and I looked right at him again, and I said, I cannot believe I am going to call you with this hand. I know 100% that you flop jack-10 straight, but I call. But I just want to see if I was right. Now, I had played limit hold'em. I played in the mix a lot. I used to be one of the top three limit hold'em players in the world, uh, back in the day, I, I don't even know where I would rank now, but I know it's not in the top three. Uh, but anyways, he bet the river. I called. He showed me Jack 10. I showed him he's king. And he was like, he was pissed. Like, how the fuck do, you, do I only win this much when you have that hand? I go, you're lucky. I said, I was going to fold it on the flop because I knew you had Jack 10. And so um, it's like I tell people all the time, you can't teach talent. You could only, you could take all the GTO, ICM, all that bullshit all you want. And talent is going to win over math every single time. Now, if you learn all the math uh, that the GTO, ICM players are playing, and you put that together with your talent, that's probably going to make you a beast. So... That's the re- the. It's really the only reason why I've been working on learning all of this is to kind of figure out what the other people are thinking and doing. Uh, but I, I pretty much, uh, I can't explain it. I tell people this all the time. You can't teach talent. You can't somehow uh, with my fucked up life, uh, God, the man upstairs. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, granted me one thing that I'm good at and. The ability in, in my gut to to just know what people have. I um, I'm just great at reading cards, and it's something that I that I, I the man upstairs gave me. And I mean, he didn't give me much. 
but he gave me something and I appreciate it every day. And, uh, I'm still playing at that high level now. And the thing was, is for the longest time when I was sick is, is you're in pain and you don't follow your gut because when you're in pain, you get, uh, like, uh, what's the best? You get false signals. In other words, uh, you think you see something, but you don't, you feel something but you don't and the reason why you don't is because you're being distracted from the pain so um on the wednesday this week it was i was like the only day i wasn't in pain i was uh, uh a little bit sore on monday uh, t- uh tuesday i felt perfect wednesday i felt perfect and then thursday and Friday were a complete catastrophe for me. And I, I don't want to think negative because I'm not going to think negative because that's in the past, those those couple days. Uh, but um, it was the worst pain I had been in since I got the spinal cord stimulator put in. And uh, I don't I, – I, I looked at the weather and outside it said 99% humidity. And then the next day it said 74% humidity. And when it's very humid – I I am in a lot of pain. Uh, I know that because I was reading uh, when I got to Florida last week, the first day and a half or two days I was there, I was in terrible pain and the humidity was like 90%. And then the other uh, five days I was there, the humidity was, it it cooled off like 10 degrees and the humidity was 40%. So I definitely know the humidity makes a big difference, and so I'm hoping and praying that that hopefully it was just uh, the humidity that caused my pain, uh, because now we're on Saturday afternoon, and I woke up today, uh, the pain level is way down, and uh, so let's uh, think positive, and hopefully things are going to be good with that. So... um, also this week, you know, uh, I don't know anybody out there if uh, you are watching what's going on in the country. Uh, uh, when I'm not playing, I, I try and pay attention to what's going on in the world. I, I watched uh, the impeachment hearings. Uh, uh, of course, I go into everything with a open mind. It's something I tell people all the time, uh, and it's very important there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that are very, very pro-Trump, and no matter what Trump does, they are going to say, uh, they're out to get him, blah, 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 blah. And there's very people that listen to the podcast that are very anti-Trump, and no matter what Trump does, Trump's the evil uh, messiah, the evil human being of the world. Uh, so it's very important that when you watch these things, uh, if you did watch them, to watch things with an open mind and listen to what they have to say. Now, with that said, uh, I believe the impeachment hearings are political theater and a complete sham. And I do believe that Trump did do something wrong, but not intentionally uh, because he's not a politician and he doesn't really kind of know the rules of things. Uh, but I don't believe he did anything wrong on that phone call that's impeachable. Is it wrong what he did? Uh, probably, but I don't think he did it on purpose. I, I think he just didn't know. Uh, uh, but again, I'm not the judge. Uh, the American people will be the judge of that. I uh, try and be very open politically. Uh, most people, they like to keep their political stuff to themselves, but I, I like to share with people what I see. Uh, it's real easy for me to just be a, what I call a MAGA person, which I'm not, and just agree with everything that Trump says or what people on the right say about Trump or whatever. But I'm very open. I listen to objective arguments and I have no problem listening to people who completely dislike Trump. And uh, the, the I actually had a call with somebody this week uh, that uh, called in the podcast um, recently, and I gave him my phone number, and he would he'd call me on the phone, and we we're talking about the impeachment hearings, and he's like started saying like negative this, like about Trump's the worst, the worst, the worst, and I said, listen, I said, and I explained to him, I said it's all political theater. I said, yeah, they're going to 
they're doing this in 45 minute increments uh, where where shift gets the opening 45 minutes and they'll closing for to shape a narrative. Now you have to look through the politics and the narrative of it. And then you ask to ask yourself, everybody out there, even if, and I know there's a lot of people listening that hate Trump's guts is what he did an impeachable offense. And the answer is no. And what's going to happen is I'm not, I don't believe now that they are going to actually impeach in the house because if they impeach in the house trump says i want i want a senate trial now in a senate trial all those witnesses that adam schiff and the democrats would not allow will have to testify in a senate and be cross-examined and then they're going to be kind of like outed for the political hacks that they all are. Now they're all political hacks, the left, the right, everyone. I, I know that, just remember that. Everybody on the right, just remember, if you're on the right and you're pro-Trump, they're still all political fucking hacks. They're all fucking bad people on the left and the right. You just got, they're all politically motivated. There's sure there's a lot of people who good, have good intentions, you know, and so, uh, you know, that's what I tell people, you know, look, look, try and, like this, this one of the guys that called me, like I said, I said, Try and look th- past your hatred of Trump and look into the facts of what they're trying to sell you. And he's like, oh, I, I just can't. I hate him so much. It's so hard for me to look past that. I go, but you have to look past that. You can't find a truth in something unless you look past uh, your hatred or division. I call it division in, in politics. So, you know, uh, with that said, uh, that was my take on the impeachment hearings. Uh, I did watch the Democrat debates also. Uh, a lot of people, again, say, you're a Trump supporter. Why do you watch the Democrat debates? Because there are a lot of people that really care about our country, and they feel maybe Trump's not doing a, such a good job, and they want to make it better. Now, you ask yourself, who are those people on stage that are not political hacks, that are just looking to pander to vote, or people who really care and as you guys know in the poker world you know um, and Daniel is supporting Andrew Yang I actually uh, really think Yang is the best I like I like Yang I like Buttigieg um, and I also like Tulsi Gabbard now if this is gives you an idea you know, how corrupt our system is. I tell people this all the time. Trump won the nomination because the media gave him $2 billion in free advertisement because they thought he could never win a general election. Okay? The media controls who is going to be in office. So they have already decided and uh, that... They do not want Andrew Yang because he's an outsider and he doesn't fit their political insider establishment bullshit. And they've also decided they don't want Tulsi Gabbard because she called them out for what they are. You know, they're the military industrial complex that makes all this money off of off these unending wars. And, you know, it, it, she said, listen. The Democrat Party, we need to go back to people uh, of, by, and for the people. And then uh, Kamala Harris attacks her for it. But it's true. You know, a lot of people out there, you might say, well, you like these insane policies they're putting forward. You might like them. But the American people, the rest of America people are not way left or way right it's like 90 percent of the country is five percent left of center or five percent right of center and we all and those are the same people that want good things for our country and uh and, and i'll admit it when in 2016 i didn't know nothing about politics so i just was 80 degrees right and and then uh even like daniel was 80 degrees left and that's why we went to war over politics which my, of course i didn't know that politics cost I know now you got to be careful if people like have strong opinions, but the a lot of our politics are are, are media driven. It's media driven to divide us, and it's media driven to divide us on both sides. So you gotta you gotta look 
what policies are best to help the country and to move our country forward. And, uh, you know, most of us that are poker players, uh, we don't kind of live in the real world. Uh, so, you know, we see somebody we dislike, but we're like, oh, God, he's the worst, he's the worst, or somebody we really like, uh, he's the best, he's the best. But, you know, it's real important that you, that you, uh, that you see what each person that's running for office has on their platform policy wise that's going to help the american people going forward now with that in mind you know i don't i'm a lot of people will be like well i don't like when mike tucks politics and you know i just want to hear poker but i will be having another mainstream person on today um somebody that i have become pretty good friends with somebody uh that my heart goes out to. Um, his name is Andrew Pollock. He lost his daughter in the Parkland shooting. And uh, as you all know, when this happened, everybody, all of us were enraged. Uh, and it's real easy to be enraged over gun control and why did, and, and, and we want to get rid of gun. And it's real easy to know this blame gun control, gun control. Again, that's a political issue where they like to push political things and the right does the same. They push uh, the same political when anything with an illegal immigrant kills somebody. It's all over the news because that's, again, pushing an agenda. But uh, Andrew's going to come on in his interview and he's he's going to discuss kind of what happened to his daughter and the policies that led to the Parkland shooting. And I think it's very good uh for people in the that uh, and poker players and people that listen to the podcast that don't know who Andrew Pollock is to truly understand uh, if you take the politics out of it, left or right, why these school shootings are happening, and he lays it out, and it's going to be a great interview coming up. And so now we are going to head into our pick of the week. Our pick of the week brought to you by my bookie. Um, if you want to make some bets, you want to degen out. We got they got live betting, prop betting. Uh, they got casino games. Mybookie.ag. You get up to a two hundred percent deposit bonus up to a thousand bucks. So uh, you get uh, put two hundred bucks on there. You get six hundred bucks. You get. Uh, 200% of whatever you put on there. It's not a bad deal. Uh, up to a thousand bucks. That's mybookie.ag. Promo code mouthpiece. Mybookie.ag. Promo code mouthpiece. If you guys want to bet some football this week, go do it. All right. My pick of the week. Bump, bump, bump. As you guys know, we are on a roll. We've lost five in a row on our pick of the week. Everybody wants to know, how do I get rich? Let's go with Mike's pick of the week and check her. Um, dun, 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 dun. So, uh, even though I've lost my pick of the week five weeks in a row, I have the worst week I've had in the last five weeks was a five and five one week and a six and four the other week. I am actually 20 games over 500 for the year. Uh, which puts me, if you were betting, maybe up one unit, I think. I haven't added it because I don't bet. Uh, so uh, I've been picking winners. I just don't fucking pick the winner pick of the week. Now, uh, Flash, stop meowing. What? Oh, wait a minute. Flash, are you trying to tell me who the winner is this week? What do you think, Flash? Denver plus four and a half. Okay, he didn't say anything. Oh, we got a late meow out of that one. Uh, this is how we handicap football here on the mouthpiece. Okay, now my pick of the week, the one I like the most, is the Chicago Bears. Flash, what do you think of the Bears? Uh-oh, Flash has it. We have agreement. Me and Flash have agreement on the Bears. What about the Patriots over Dallas, Flash? Mm, doesn't sound as enticing. Do you, do you like the Patriots, Flash? A little bit. Bears? Oh, you heard it. Okay, so it looks like my cat's in agreement with me. Um, 
We are going to go with our pick of the week as the Chicago Bears minus six and a half over the Giants. Um, you ask yourself, oh, he's going crazy now. He's like, oh, yeah, you got it, Mike. Hey, this We might break our slump. Now you have to ask yourself, do we believe in what Flash's meows have to say? Or do we just keep checkering Mike on the pick of the week? The reason why I like the Bears this week, A, the Giants have lost six in a row. Daniel Jones looks absolutely hopeless. They got blown out by the Jets, for God's sakes. Uh, I don't see how they are going to score against the Chicago defense. People don't realize they think the Chicago defense has slipped. They, They haven't got the turnovers they had last year, but they're giving up 17 a game. If you look over the the last 10 years, teams that have given up 17 a game were probably in the Super Bowl or in the championship game. So their defense is really stout still. Anybody that says difference, they're crazy. Uh, Trubisky has really, really struggled. He's lost his confidence. He's looked really bad. Um, the way they have got, they're beaten up on the O-line. But They're facing the Giants. The Giants give up like 30. I mean, even the Bears are going to be able to score on the Giants. So my pick of the week is the Bears. Um, That is my number one pick of the week. Uh, The other one that I'm leaning was leaning to, which I was leaning to last week, which we should have gone with, um, is the Patriots. Uh, You when a line doesn't look right, this is one thing I've learned about football. And uh, even though I don't bet no more. Uh, I, I really try and follow this. Why I've had a pretty good year in the pick em is when a line doesn't look like right, it usually isn't. So you ask yourself, the Patriots are struggling mightily offensively. They, they're nine and one and they've up at, they really beat nobody. Um, they, 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 t- they took it to, they, even last week against Philadelphia, they, they struggled to score, but the defense really, which has been all world except for the week against Baltimore, uh, I just think that Dallas, with their six wins, their own, they have beaten no teams with a winning record. Their best win is against Philadelphia, who is five and five. And if they lose this week to Seattle, they'll have a losing record. So they beat nobody with a win, winning record. And you could also say the same thing with the Patriots haven't beat anybody with a winning record. Uh, I just think that when Vegas makes this line six and a half, uh, they're begging you to bet Dallas. Uh, so uh, I wouldn't be leaning towards Dallas, but that's it. You know, I uh, I'm done going against Baltimore. I mean, if I I, I want to take the Browns plus the three and a half, but uh, I mean, all I do is go against this team every week, and all they do is put up these insane numbers. And it looks to me Lamar Jackson is absolutely the real deal. So we're definitely staying away from that. So that's it. Our pick of the week this week. The Chicago Bears, minus six and a half, over the New York football giants. Uh, I'm sure you can make a lot of money. Just take the other west side of it. I'm three and eight on my pick of the week. After we, yeah, that's pretty bad. We started off one and oh. Then we lost three in a row. Then we won two, and now we've lost five in a row. So if we take away the game I really guaranteed, I've guaranteed two. One was. Baltimore. I took Cincinnati against Baltimore. They lost 49-10. But the uh, first week with when I said take Tennessee against Cleveland, uh, it's um, after that first week we are uh, two and eight on the pick of the week, and we'll be right back here on the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece. If you'd like to take part in our phone call segment, you can give us a call at 702-329-04. Eight zero, And if you're a snowflake or a pussy and you don't want to talk to me, you can email me at mouthpiecepodcast at gmail.com. Also, follow me at the Mouth Mattiso on Twitter for times that our call-in segment will be live. It's time for our favorite time of the show, our phone call segments where our listeners call in to ask me, the crazy one, what's going on this week. So let's hear our phone call segments. Let's light up the lines. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Good. Who's this? This is uh, Curry from North Carolina. Hey, buddy. How's it going, man? Uh, doing good, man. Uh, 
This is Thomas Day. I love your podcast. And that uh, I was wondering, uh, what uh, what states did you start playing in your early career? I mean, what did you start out playing? Uh, you mean what internet sites or what? No, I'm talking. About, I'm talking live live oh, poker. Live. Like what did you I start started, out Honestly, it's really crazy. I I started out playing four eight dollar limit hold'em, uh, and that's basically back in the mid 90s early 90s there was no no limit hold them there was no limit hold them once a year the main event and there was actually two no limit hold them's a year there was a 3500 and a 10k at the world series and that was it everything else was limit uh so i started out limit holding them i was really good uh okay. I, I didn't even know like higher limits existed i i was like oh this is fun you know and then I started playing. Somebody said to start playing at the Binions, where they we played. Started playing ten twenty limit hold them and twenty forty limit hold them with Johnny Moss uh, right, right. when he was uh, really sick towards the end of his life, and he uh, the, the Benny Binion gave Johnny Moss like five thousand a day to play. Um, and so we would all fight for seats in the twenty forty game because Johnny Moss was going to lose. At least a thousand to three thousand, usually uh, sometimes five in a twenty forty limit game, and uh, wow. it was uh, you know I um, never knew him before he started to lose it, uh, but he did tell me one thing, and it's the thing that always sticks in my mind is uh, when um, I had backed Scotty in ninety seven when he won the the World Series. Uh, but before, why it was going on, and I was playing 2040 with Johnny Moss, he goes, son, he goes, let me tell you something. This is so big right now that it's all luck. The best players don't have to win anymore. It's all luck. Now, that was when they had 300 and I think 60 people in the main event that year. And he said that. Just right. imagine what he's thinking now. I always like to, to yeah. say that, you know. So uh, he, he knew what was coming, didn't he? He knew the boom was coming, didn't he? Yeah, I don't know, but he said it was how many people there. He goes, "Oh, it's so many now. It's all luck." That was the now they had three hundred sixty. Now they got ten thousand. <laughs> yeah, it's a crap. It's a crap shoot now. It sure is, but uh, yeah. So that's what I was doing, and uh, just trying to keep it going. Uh, uh, health's been a lot better, and uh, everything's that's, going. That's, good. that's great to hear, man. That's so, great to hear. I root for you. I really do. I appreciate it, man. Tell all your friends, listen to the mouthpiece, and uh, and uh, I appreciate you calling and listening on in. No problem, man. Have a good night. You too, my friend. Later. All right. See you. Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. Hey, Mike. I just had a real quick question. Sure. Who's this? A girl. Um, my name is Catwoman. Okay. Sounds like a good name to me. I'm a yeah, cat, I'm a cat wow. guy. anyway, um, I just want to get your opinion on something because I know you're familiar, possibly, but I was playing last night at Cash Game, and, you know, uh, sometimes Cash Games um, are a lot of fun, sometimes they're not. Last night, in particular, I had a really bad beat, and I was just wondering, you know, maybe if I had been... Um, maybe on something, like maybe if I had smoked a joint or maybe I'd been on ecstasy, the bad beat wouldn't have tilted me so much. So what are your thoughts about um, using recreational drugs so people and the way they play at the table doesn't piss you the fuck off? Well, that's a good question. I've never done any drugs when I'm playing poker, but like I've been looking because I started smoking a little bit of weed lately, uh, and it's helped me out with my mental situation, um, and it's really calmed me down. And I know some of the best poker players in the world, like when they're on breaks or even playing cash, they take breaks and they go out and smoke pot. And I used to always say, how can you smoke pot? Like a pot usually puts me to sleep. But then I realized mm -hmm. there's like different strains that help you focus and there's a lot of poker players that swear by it. Now, as far as bad beats go, you, you just got to learn to, ex like if you've been around, like I've been around long enough now that it does, a bad beat doesn't even bother me. I just say nice hand and go to the next one. Uh, and it's something that the first, I'll say nine, 
10 years of my poker career, I used to go crazy and, and that's how I got my nickname because I used to call people names whenever they put beats on me. But uh, now uh, people, you know, there's a lot of great players now and you don't want to ever piss off any people that play bad that put beats on you. you right. Just wanna, you just yeah, I agree, nice which hand, is why I'm so. thinking maybe if I took a little ecstasy before I played, I wouldn't feel so bad about losing my money to these jokers, you know? Well, well I could give you one. I'll give you one example. I don't want to name a name. So uh, a, a, a high limit guy uh, recently wanted to get in a very juicy cash game and uh, he got there. And uh, I know everybody that's listening to the show is going to be like, who's the guy? Who's the guy? But I won't give it out. Uh, and they said, OK, you could play in the game, but you have to take uh, two shots and one molly. Uh, and so uh, he did it and he was uh, rolling his How do you play? Up. How do you play? He, he you lost 86,000 and doesn't remember. Yeah, but he was a Wait, 86? But he was he was cool about it, right? It was like oh yeah, was, yeah I mean it, it, this guy's got yeah. yeah he he was cool about it, you know. But it, it, one of the funniest part hands that he told me was that he was rolling so hard on the ecstasy that he um it was thirteen hundred to call and he put thirteen thousand in <laughs> and he doesn't even oh, remember man. the the pot. So uh, I don't I don't know. I would not recommend that. I would uh, okay. I would just okay. recommend just. Um, uh, relaxing, taking a beat, mm -hmm. taking maybe even taking a couple deep breaths, even saying nice hand, get up, go to the, mm -hmm. go walk around the casino, miss around, let yourself mm -hmm. if you if you have problems where it's bothering you, uh, because mm -hmm. uh, after a while you'll get used to it, it won't bother you so much, and uh, you just you just deal with it. And the best yeah. way uh, I I recommend people if, if it, when they take a beat if it, if it really starts to get to them is the second they take a beat say nice hand pick up and uh, not pick up just just walk away from the table you you miss like maybe five hands or even one round of blinds get yourself collected mm -hmm. and uh, go back there kick their fucking right. ass. Okay, well 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 that's okay. I'll think about what you're saying. Maybe do some meditation. I don't know. I'm just like over it. But one last question and I'll let you go sure. real quick. What's your thoughts on people eating at the poker table because I'm tired of Mr. Ham and Cheese sandwich touching the card. Yeah. You know? That's like, uh <laughs> what, what, why do people think they can eat whatever they want at the fucking table? Like there's got to be a list of like please don't eat this at the table. You know, like when you work in an office building, people don't bring fish. Why? Because it stinks at the office. Like, yeah. can we get people to stop like eating things that are like touching well, the cards and then making them gross? I'm over you it. Know, I, it. It gets it, me so tilted. I would, I could, I definitely understand that. Now, when I play in, in the bigger games, we are, we're playing pretty much with the same people and we all kind of order food at once. So, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we're eating and we're playing, but we're, we, we, we're really careful. We have wipes and stuff. But, yeah, I definitely could understand that bothering you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, like, kinda maybe is public kinda shaming gross. at the table for people who are eating stuff that, like, sun chips or, like, greasy stuff. You know, maybe yeah. you have some public shaming at the poker table. Like, yeah. the wrong way. You know, it, it, it's funny because, like, a lot of times I've gotten uh, stuff that's kind of greasy, uh, whether it's a piece of pizza or chicken wings and i'm like wiping my hands with the wipes as quick as i can before the cards come around but you know a lot of times like you just said a lot of times they're, they're, they don't do that and it is as much as i don't give a shit it, it is kind of gross mm -hmm. you know <laughs> but i can i can yeah. definitely feel what you're saying so uh you know I, you know what I, I think the best answer would be would be like can you do me a favor and, 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 and use some wipes before you put your fucking hands on the cards, you know, or yeah, say it definitely. nicely. I don't know. See, you're a woman. Yeah. You could get you could get away with a lot of shit. You know, and they're not going to get in your face. Yeah. You know, yeah, guys I mean? like it when I talk dirty to them. So, yeah, exactly. They can, like, yeah. Tell them whatever. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the call. Have right. a great weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, yeah. man. Bye. Yeah, bye. Welcome to the mouthpiece this is Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going, man? Good, man. Who's this? Uh, this is Austin from Orlando, Florida. Oh, good place to be, Orlando. I was just in Florida. The weather's pretty yeah, good out there. Pretty right good now. weather right now. Yeah, it was so nice. It was like seventy. Humidity was like forty percent. I'm like, man, this is great. Then I came back to Vegas. Yeah. It was raining with humidity at ninety nine percent and forty degrees. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a quick question. Sure. Um, I don't know if you've ever listened to the Cracking Ace podcast. I heard uh, about it, but I haven't. So, yeah, I was listening to it last week, and okay. they were talking about how you play aces in, 
and suggested sometimes it's okay to fold aces. I just wanted to know your opinion on that. Uh, it's never okay to fold aces pre-flop uh, unless pre-flop, yeah. unless you're in a super satellite in which uh, you're locked up a seat. Uh, but now uh, the way oh, that Matt Savage has been doing it is they, after like each hour, like four or five hours in, they take the five biggest stacks and give them a seat. So then you don't have to worry about doing that. Uh, but other than that, it's, I don't believe it's, well, I, I know it's never okay to fold aces. Uh, there's four people, it goes raise and four collars. I just shove, shove all in, you know? <laughs> It for, yeah, I was thinking the know. same thing when they said uh, in some scenarios it's smart to fold aces. It seems like it'd be better just if you're scared, just shove preflop. I, I I just think that those those people are better off having a podcast and or if they want they come play in my poker game. Uh, if they're folding, yeah. if they're folding aces preflop, I want them in my game. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's just me. Yeah, exactly. I mean. I mean, in limit hold them. I mean, if it goes raise and five people call, uh, it, by re raising, you're not getting rid of anybody. So, and that makes you a huge dog against five people. Maybe, maybe in that spot, uh, if you're if it's going to be a five way or six way action flop, even if you re raise it in limit. But there's 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 never ever in no limit. Because if it goes raise and five callers, I just going to move in or 10 exit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're not going to get exactly. five callers. You're going to get maybe one. And then you're going to be a massive favorite against whatever you're up against. So uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, can't, I can't agree with, uh, with any with what you heard. I just can't. Yeah. So, I appreciate Bye. the call, man. Thanks for calling. And yeah. have a great weekend and make some money. Yeah, appreciate it. I can't wait to listen to the podcast. You got Have it. Have a good one. Later. Bye. The mouthpiece. Okay, everybody. So we've uh, got ourselves our first sponsor on this show. Their name is My Bookie, and uh, they're a very reputable company. Uh, they have blackjack, craps, roulette. They have all kinds of other casino games, as well as tons of sports betting for all you degenerates out there. So do me a favor. You're listening to the show. Go visit mybookie.ag. Put in the promo code mouthpiece. That's mybookie.ag, promo code mouthpiece. And you get up to a 200% bonus up to $1,000. So you spin, you win, get paid only at mybookie. Up to $1,000 bonus. That's mybookie. Enter promo code mouthpiece thanks you guys i appreciate it and uh i appreciate them supporting the show welcome to the mouthpiece today's special guest mr andrew pollock how you doing today andy uh we're doing all right i'm on my way i'm actually going to a luncheon with uh laura trump okay in eugene or in eugene I'll be seeing her in about an hour. Uh, oh. we're at a, we'll be doing a fundraiser, probably for the president. Sounds good. And just, so, so that's what I'm up to today. I'm on the road. So for my listeners out there um, that uh, like to listen to the narrative that they hear on TV, which is many of my listeners, I want you to kind of... Uh, this is, I know it's a tough subject and my condolences to you and what happened to your daughter and everything at Parkland. Uh, try and get into the head of really what happened uh, to your daughter in Parkland during the shooting almost two years ago now. Sure. Well, what the media and everybody and mostly the, in the country wanted everyone to believe that it was the gun. It was a scary gun, and it was a weapon that caused the whole shooting. Right. Uh, even uh, the day after, the day after my daughter was murdered, the superintendent of the school was blaming, putting, pointing the finger at the NRA. Right. And and so was the sheriff. The local sheriff in town was blaming the NRA and, and pushing for more gun control. I remember, and, I remember and this that. was all all before my daughter was even buried. Uh, of course, they were doing this, 
And I didn't know everything then, but I wanted to learn the facts mm-hmm. of, uh, of what happened. And I wanted to not just listen to the media and their narrative. Of course. Uh, I didn't have an agenda. My agenda was to find out what happened. Right. So as I started digging into, and I was never political ever. Right. Until now I am because I see how bad what these policies, uh, these leftist policies have done to us. Uh, a public school systems and con- continues to do it. Right. I started looking into what happened and, and interviewing people uh, from, uh, you know, from the school district. Kids that went to school at Douglas were approaching me and telling me what happened. They knew who the shooter was before mm-hmm. he even left the building. Right. And when I started doing my investigation, I started coming out, uh, learning the real facts of what was behind the shooting in Parkland that led to the 17 people getting murdered and me never seeing my daughter again because of these policies. Wow. That's, you know, it's, 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 it's such a tragic story. And I, and I, and I just don't even, I I can't even fathom what you've gone through the last two years. I, I just, I, my, my heart goes to you and I, and I know. And it's something you you can't recover from, you know, it's just something that I call it. It's an open, wound on my heart that's never going to heal yeah so the day i die or whatever that day is you know i look at life differently now if i yeah. if i go tomorrow i'm okay with it right but you know it's something you never heal from and it just changes your whole perspective on life and it's uh you're never the same ever again uh yeah. when when something like this happens and it was avoidable and uh most of the media want parents to think in the country that it's uh, it was a gun control issue mm-hmm. when it's not. You know, uh, th- this kid was so evil, uh, and the school district knew it. Right. They actually, uh, in high school, I found out that uh, they, they'll never tell you this, but I had to depose people in my civil case. Right. Uh, and they actually, uh, they had to frisk the killer every morning before school. Wow. That's how dangerous he was. They right. wouldn't let him in with a backpack into school. They were worried he was going to bring weapons in. But they still, it was acceptable to have such a bad student in the school. Uh, in middle school, he was in fact he was fatuated well, with guns, killing, blood. Uh, he was so dangerous. They had to tie his desk down. He'd be throwing his desk around. He would hide in the hallways and cackle at people and scare kids. And it was just ongoing from middle school all the way through high school. You know, the the police sign on to these policies also because right. the sheriff they're elected officials Correct. so they want to sign on to these policies of not holding kids accountable this mm-hmm. sheriff so when he would run for office he could say he reduced uh crime uh by in juveniles by 30 to 40 percent he mm-hmm. reduced it but what they do is they just stop reporting it or, or stop arresting so when right. he runs you know it looks better for him you know, his percentage, uh, you know, goes down of arrests. So he's, he's you know, he's the greatest sheriff ever to live. The right. same as the superintendent. You know, they stop expelling. They stop uh, expulsions. They stop juvenile arrests. And the superintendent could get on and say, well, since I arrived in Broward County, I reduced crime in the schools by 70%. You know, yeah. So the police went to his house, the murderer's house, over 40 times for him and his brother without ever being arrested. Wow. One of the calls uh, that the sheriff's office got was that he was going to shoot the school up. The kid still was never arrested uh, yeah. or even brought up into the into the precinct, for that matter. And he actually trespassed at the school after he threatened to shoot the school up and still was never arrested. But, yeah. you know, the media doesn't want to tell you any of these things. But, 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 uh, and, and these policies are going on throughout the whole country. Of course. And the thing is, is that this piece of shit should have been yeah. arrested long before this happens. But don't worry. They got fucking guns ablazing in CNN at Roger Stone's house at 6 a.m. Worried about what he might yeah. fucking do. But they could give a shit less about... You know, because you know what? I, I, as sick as this sounds, me and me and my girl have said this many times. You almost believe that they want to have a school shooting so they could push their gun yeah, control. Yeah, so bullshit. they could push. It, it, it's the truth because yeah. Parkland 
was a scary AR, right? Mm-hmm. That's what they say. They, they think right. an AR is, is a, it's just a semi-automatic rifle. Right. And you know that uh, Beto O'Rourke was <laughs> throughout <laughs> his whole campaign, you know, now he's like somewhere camping somewhere in the woods. Well, they made, his campaign, they, you know, they got rid of him on He's going to, he's going to do a buyback. He's going to confiscate guns, all these semi-automatics. But meanwhile, on Beto's back door, uh, in May of 2018, there was a school shooting. Ten right. people were murdered right. with a shotgun and a pistol, and right. he doesn't even talk about it. And that happened in Texas. Right. So of course they don't care. They don't have Democrats. You know, and I'm, I, I never, I didn't always hate these people. You know what right. I mean? I don't like to use the word hate. I, I despise no, them. I agree. I, I don't like to use. There's a lot of good policies. Democrats, but yes, yeah, I agree. I looked into these policies, and at the end of them, with all the schools and, and the way they push. You see, they deflect from real solutions. I know that. By blaming gun control, they deflect on what we really could accomplish in schools. And, you know, when you look at it that way, probably what they do, they, they deflect from doing anything in the country that would be uh, that would that would support, you know, just our economy, uh, better borders, everything mm-hmm. American. They just push agendas and, and, and they fight. They fight us from making our country great. Yes, and, and it's the same thing with it's the same thing with schools. You know, yeah. it's the same thing with schools. If they don't look at the, they don't look for real solutions. It works against us. That's the thing. If they wanted real, I, I noticed that a lot of things that you're pushing for, which I agree with, is is kind of like when you go into, like if I go to a Vegas Golden Knight game, you know, I go through metal detectors. I'm not allowed to bring an iPad in. I'm not allowed to bring a backpack in. Um, why? Like you, you had said, I, 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 I was doing some reading, like after 9-11, all when we went through the airports, we couldn't go. Anything could go through. Right. Yeah. They fixed it. So why? How hard is it to put metal detectors, um, have somebody, uh, a, an armed person at. Go, so it takes an extra, what, 15 minutes to get into school and we won't have to go yeah. through this again. Am I right? Even I mean, is that the way you feel? work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if kids knew they were going to be wanded. Right. Or you had, uh, you know what I mean? And, and you didn't even have to do it all the time. It could be spot. But there's so many things we could do uh, that parents should know about. And anyone, I want all the parents, I'm going to tell them exactly. You know, I want them to read my book, Why Meadow Died. Because right. it lays it out for every parent. It's a manual. Right. And uh, it's, it's in stock now, finally, on Amazon. It was okay. sold out. But, but every parent should read this book, Why Meadow Died. And I'm going to tell you important things. That's going on, and that's why, and, and about these school shootings, that's okay. just going to keep going on and getting worse. So the, I'm going to give them the, the facts. Right. The facts are the disciplinary uh, policies and lack of in the public schools, right. uh, where uh, it's uh, Obama really pushed it in these public schools mm-hmm. to end the school to prison pipeline. And right. what that does is it just creates an environment of chaos in every public school because kids aren't held accountable. Regardless of, you know, you got the NAACP, you got the ACLU, you you got the Southern Law Poverty Center, Southern Poverty Law Center. They're all they all think that kids of color are are getting suspended. That's their thing. They get suspended, arrested, expelled more than uh, Caucasian uh, children. But But, you you know as well as I do. Yeah, I I know. I'm just saying to parents. I don't care what color a child is. I'll say it to anybody. I don't care if you're black, yellow, sure. green. Kids need accountability. And when you don't give kids accountability, that's when you're racist. If you're not going to suspend a black kid because he did something, uh, then you're being racist because you're not helping him. You're setting him up for failure because yeah. he doesn't learn uh, consequences. Well, that's, so, that's, and that's, that's what happened in the school districts across the country. Yeah. It's one thing. And, and, and the thing that, that I, I'm going to relate a little bit with what you're saying is like, OK, so I'm a couple of years younger than you. So we're about the same age. And when we grow up, when we grew up, I, I'm not, I mean, I could high school like it was yesterday. Like if you did something yep. wrong in school. Right. You got a warning. If you did something wrong again, you got to, went to the principal's office and I never did yep. get, get suspended. But I've been sent to the principal's office and we were always taught my dad always taught me uh you know treat people of authority with respect and that also goes to why so a lot of uh 
uh, uh, unarmed or even any people of color get shot by police because we i was always taught if a police officer pulls you over yes sir no sir if everybody would just say yes sir no sir, yeah, we would have comply. no All you gotta shooting do is comply. right but and they don't want no that they, that's the problem and that's uh, the policies that's the, problem. that's the policies yep. they're pushing and yep and when we went to school right the difference was you wouldn't do anything at school because you were in fear of getting suspended or expelled. Absolutely. Okay. And now, but now it's turned. Yeah. Kids actually sell drugs at school, wow. fight at school, uh, steal at school because they know there'll be no consequence. Oh. And that's one of the major things going on in the school districts. Yeah. And I won't want to tell parents about another one that's very dangerous that's going on is they'll take children that are mentally ill, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll, they're emotionally disturbed, and they'll label them special needs. Right. Okay? Not like what, when I thought, when most parents, even myself included, thought of special needs, you thought of a kid who has autism, dyslexia, mm-hmm. dyslexia right. uh, cerebral palsy, uh, just a learning disability who's not disruptive. No parent would have a problem with that child being mainstream. Yeah, but what back happened when, is when, when we went to school. Americans with they, Disability Act. Yeah. They but, label now emotionally disturbed children special huh. needs, and they put them, they mainstream them with our children in the schools. Wow. You know, it, you know, when I went to school, there used there was a, a, a high school, I forgot the name of it, but it was a special needs school uh, for people with autism, uh, special learning abilities, uh, and, and that's where they went. And now what they're doing is, and listen, a lot of the problems we have with the kids coming up nowadays, and you and I know you'll agree with this, is is this is why I'm a lot like you. I wasn't political until 2015. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know what a fucking Republican or Democrat. I never were. voted. But yeah, I never even voted till 2016. Till this till this guy took over and just destroyed the country. Everything that what we were about, right? You had to get involved, and, and, and now it's even more. You got to get involved. Yeah. And and the thing is, is everybody wants to hate Trump because they hate the way he talks. They hate the way he tweets. And, and I'm, I'll be honest. Do I wish he was more presidential? Oh, of course, we all do. OK, but what you don't hear out of the mainstream media is solutions that he's getting done. And that's why they can't win in 2020. Yep, and is that sure. is is the whole problem is is we could you have ever andrew if i talked if i move you back four years ago okay could you have ever imagined how corrupt our media is ever no i, I wouldn't i would you know that they're so corrupt and fake that mm-hmm. when my book came out and i was on my book tour just a few months ago i was right. in i went through washington i went through new york Florida on a book tour, mm-hmm. and the only mainstream media that would put me on was Fox. Yeah. I was on like everybody on Fox wanted would put me on to, to get my message out. Yeah. CNBC canceled on me, MSNBC, nothing, ABC Cricket. Because you don't CBS, fit their none narrative. Of them, none they of could them give wanted, a fuck. Yeah, one of, none of them wanted to know the truth of what happened. Of course. And, and it bothered me, man. And then I said, you know what? This is what the president says is the truth. Yeah. He doesn't get credit for anything he does. Right. And you know what? We're all getting it. Okay. And yeah, that's why we just got to beat them down come 2020. Yeah. People, everyone. Now you have to vote because it's like a civil war going on with votes. Yeah. Okay. And, and we just have to have more votes than them to show them that, listen, like you've been saying, just shut the fuck up already. Yeah. Okay, with your fucking impeachment, with your Russians, <laughs> with your fucking Stormy Daniels, with your Ukrainians, with your collusion, all this shit. We don't give a fuck no more. Right? Nobody gives I don't a, give fuck. a fuck. I Who? can't even watch it no more. I can't, I can't either. Even turn the fucking news on. Not even Fox. I, I can't either. I put Fox on. I don't want to hear it anymore with this shit because we don't care. Nobody and that's, cares. And that's the bottom line. Thank Nobody you. Nobody cares that loves the president. Right. So fuck them, what they're going to do. And and they're just going to get beat down. And but the problem is, we all like me and you never voted before. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got to get out and vote. Yeah. That's conservative and like-minded like us. Yeah. And we beat them. Right. 
And the, the problem is, you know, it's you can't sit back no more. The average American that just has their job and doesn't want to be bothered with politics, you can't just say you don't care no more. You got to get out and vote in 2020. No, I, I agree with you. And you know, it, being in my line of work as a professional poker player, uh, most you know the uh, the the a lot of the stars nowadays are young kids that basically had no life, learned how to play poker on the internet, and they don't really know what's going on. And and I'm not going to lie, as a poker player, we don't really live in the real world. And I, I've i li- actually got a new book co- going to be coming out after the first year called Poker, oh, Pain, awesome. poker Pain and Politics, How All Three Made Me a Better Person. And it's not just the left-right thing. It's about caring about others, caring about what's going on in our country, not about what the mainstream media is trying to sell us, okay? Like, they want to sell racism. Have you noticed now the last six months what what we heard racist 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 for three and a half fucking years and now you don't hear it no more why because all their internal polling told them racist ra- people are sick of hearing about it because they know america yeah, is not a racist country are Look there racists yeah done. yeah you know just recently did you see what he did for israel i'm uh you know those the, the west the west bank yeah, I heard about that's what you were talking about today. A part of Israel, yeah, and uh, and that was huge, man. That's bigger than him moving the embassy, yeah, uh, to Jerusalem. Yeah, but, but these people, they'll still call him a racist and a white supremacist, right? We, we, like we even listen, it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm you know, reading an he's article. The furthest from it, I met with the guy. <laughs> yeah, I know he's and, furthest from it. And we're gonna, I'm gonna get to that in a second. But like, even I saw an article from Washington Post or one of those fake ass news networks of. Uh, Papers and they're like Stephen Miller is a white supremacist. <laughs> Stephen Miller's a fucking Jew, first of all, and uh-huh. white supremacists yeah. is like, I mean, they're crazy. And listen, yeah, lo- listen, Trump's got Jewish grandkids. I know. What's he gonna do? For dress them up for Halloween like the KKK? <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but you know, they they're grasping at anything they can, even with this lasting in, uh, pitch uh-huh. impeachment to try and help them get over 2020 because they know they're going to just get crushed. They can't win. So they're grasping at anything they right. can, you know, uh, uh, to, to throw a curveball in the 2020 election. And I tell so people Every this. single one a candidate they got is it, it, not even going to hold the candle to, to the president. <laughs> Andy, None let, of them are anything. Dude, out of, out of let's just say uh, uh, people that are eligible over 35 years old that could be president, okay, there's I figured it out there's about anywhere – between 50 to 80 million of those people. These are the 18 people they came up with to run against President Trump. Yeah, this is what I they mean, got. They okay, is get, this even real? Right? And they're so far left, these people. They're, they're so hot. They ran on the Second Amendment. Right. You know, that's not going to happen. Right. Their, their, their platform is attack the Second Amendment, open and open borders. And attack the president, right? which didn't work in and 2016. The that's their platform. Yeah. All of them. There's nothing else. And health care. They're going to give free health care and checks out. They're going to give every family a thousand dollars to vote for. Them. Yeah, for, you know for, something like that is their is their agenda and their platform. And it's just you know we're on to it. Like the economy, can you believe we've been in a ten year? I've never seen this before in my life. Ten yeah. years of the stock market going up. Right. Ten years of real estate going up. It's never been in this no. country. You know, it makes me kind of nervous being it, in real estate. But, yeah. It, it unfortunately, you know, it's I, never I, been going straight up ever. Yeah. Nothing nothing goes straight up. You know, I can never in my life and I pray to God every day I'll never have to deal with the tragedy you had to deal with. But, you know, um a lot of me being political it all came from when I had a very very serious injury that made me pretty much bedridden for 15 months, which I was kind of like forced to pick a candidate for my girl. And I took this, I I said this many times, I took this poll uh, and Trump came out as my candidate. And um, one, and I've said this many a times is one of the questions. Did you make any money in Vegas on that? I, my, my girl, the money on the president, I made 15,000, but I would have made 250,000 if, if, if my wonderful girlfriend, Jerry would have just let 
me bet what I wanted to bet. But she was like, well, it's not that I don't think he's going to win. I just I think they're going to steal it. They're going to try and steal it from from us. And the truth of the matter is, is I that I'm really worried about that in 2020 not that i think we have to win the the trump well i think they know they have the internal polling what do you think they they know elizabeth warren can't win a general so now they're throwing uh no. obama's right hand man out there and bloomberg out there and he and the funny thing yep. about that is bloomberg said uh, in March, I-, I can't run for president because then I'll have to apologize about p- uh, policies that I am very, uh, 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 what's it called, about, very staunch about. And what does he do two days ago? He comes out and, and he starts his first And the guy, stuff. what is he, like 78, the guy? Uh, I, they're all they're Isn't all. He? I think he's hot. How the hell do you think you could do that? You know, Trump's a unique type of guy. <laughs> he's you know, something. I met him. He's high energy. But I don't, you know, I'm in my 50s and I wouldn't want to be flying around campaigning. And, I can't. I could never and, do a Trump. You know what is. I mean? I wouldn't want to do it. And then you got to debate. Like, you got to have all these debates. Yeah. You got to be on, you know, at, could you imagine being that sharp at 78? He sleeps four I, hours you know, a I day, could. Trump. I mean, yeah. how does he do it? Drinks, di- drinks that Coke all day long, too. Yeah. He's yeah. on that soda kick. But yeah. I, Diet Coke all yeah. day long. He's like, I, don't I used know to be any one of these people besides him, and he, Bloomberg's even older, Bernie's older. Right. You know, when do you just say, you know what, I just want to go have some fun with my grandkids. Well, that's... that's these guys, you know, they, they just don't relate. I don't see it being that old, close to your 80s, thinking you're going to run around like a little kid, uh, you know. Well, these, these, you know, Bernie already had a heart attack, you know. Yeah. And so that's where, I, that's where I lead into another question I'd like to know. And this is why I said it from the day from I say it every day. These motherfuckers are all corrupt. How are they running at 80 years old to be? I mean, Nancy Pelosi, she's what, 79? And she, have you heard her when she, she does an interview? About 90. I don't know. Yeah. And her, in, her interviews, she's completely like lost. Joe Biden, when he's in New Hampshire, he's like, Oh, I love Vermont. What's a wonderful place? Or he was in Vermont and he said, "What a New yeah, Hampshire." Yeah, what he a, doesn't. I mean, these people have dementia. I don't know how they they got no. They just have nobody, yeah. and uh, they're just praying that they get in. You know, and even Joe Biden, you know, the president. People don't know he ended uh, federally. He ended the those Obama leniency policies in the schools. He right. rescinded them. The president, because I was with them when he did it. Right. And the Joe Biden is his platform and. Elizabeth Warren, uh, mm-hmm. his their platform is to bring them back, to of implement course. and push them into the schools more of having no suspensions or expulsions. It, right now in California, it's against the law to disp- suspend disruptive children. That's the law now in, in California. And, get, and I don't even even if you're a parent and you're a Democrat, right? right and you think, you know, OK, I'm a Democrat. How could you think putting your kid in a school? Where kids the kid could hurt. tell the teacher to go fuck themselves. Right. They could steal an iPhone. They could have a they could assault a teacher and have no consequence. Do you think that'd be putting your child in a good environment? It's so ter- they got that's... really smart up, man. It's, forget so about many... agendas. Do what's like you said before. Do the righteous thing. Vote righteous. What's right for your children when yeah. you put them in those schools? Yeah, and and that's the thing is, of course, I've done so much reading about what's really going on in our country that the I call them the lamestream media because they're lame as fuck. Is they don't want to address the situation. Like California's a nightmare. There's like six hundred thousand oh, yep. homeless people, and there's my cousin just had to move from Studio City right when you get off the the one hundred one. Used to be one of the nicest areas because his daughter, who's seven years old, could not go outside and play because there's needles all over the streets. Yeah, dude, they ban needles. They ban straws, right? Yeah, but they, they, they give straws. needles out. Yes. Right. Can this you imagine is, these people? And this then, is true. So I was going through my wife lives in California. Not right. no, my wife's family lives from California. Right. So that's why I live in Oregon. We're close, but I didn't want to live in uh, California. Yeah. So we're going through a park. I'm walking my dog and I see these people with vests on walking through the park. And I'm like, what are they? You know, I'm, I'm just watching them, what mm-hmm. they're doing. So the city subcontracts 
contractors to go through the parks picking up needles. Yeah. Could you imagine this? And then they give them out. Then they have these places where they give them out. Yeah. And they're worried about straws, but it's okay for needles to be around all over the place for these people. And so they, they're just sick and demented. These it's, people. it's and, 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 and it's crazy. You got this shift, shift, oh my God. shifty shift. You got Maxine Waters, Pelosi, <sighs> they're crazy. Kamala Harris, Swalwell. They're all from California. These people. Yeah, and all of them. Where, they're all nuts. Listen, I'm, and, and you might be a lot like me. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty much a libertarian. I'm. Uh, uh, I, I have socially liberal views and I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care about all that, you know, but I'm fiscally conservative. I don't want government in my life and I don't understand. Listen, if I knew that they were going to raise taxes a certain amount and they were going to take that money and actually help African-American kids, Latino kids, and help the people in the ghettos have a better life. You think I wouldn't be for that? You think you wouldn't be for that? Yeah, everybody would be. We all would. Of course. But they just, you know, when government, when they run things, they just can't do it. Man. It's right. just impossible. You get the people like uh, like a small well running oh stuff God. or Pelosi well, Maxine Waters or they're, that other I guy mean, from uh, Baltimore. You know, yeah. they're just terrible people down it when you think about it. You know, they don't even look, even Chuck Schumer, the day after the week of that shooting in California, right? right he was pushing, he was saying, you see, this is what happens when you don't have universal background checks. Yeah. Now, the kid was 15 that did it. This is the uh, one three days ago, background right? background check would have made a difference? This- Crying Chuck. You were really talking about the one three days ago, Andrew? Or is that the one you're what talking happened? about? Are you talking about the shooting three, four days ago? Yeah, in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah. Chucky was on after uh, calling out Mitch McConnell for background checks. Yeah. You know what I mean? How would the background checks would have made a difference, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so but, they spew this stuff that with no solutions. That's my problem with That's these it. They don't look at the facts. All they do is push agendas. Like they're just like a broken record. That's, you know, the blame the NRA and, and scary uh, uh, semi-automatic rifles. Yeah. And yeah it, but don't really look for – how about we hold these kids accountable? How about mentally ill kids don't get mainstreamed into these schools? Mm-hmm. And when someone makes a threat, you arrest them and you hold them accountable. So I, they have a background. Background checks only work if they have backgrounds. So, but Democrats don't want to give people backgrounds, so background checks won't work when they threaten people's lives or they trespass out of school or they, or, or they write down a rape list and say they're going to rape these kids or kill them. Right. You know, if you don't arrest them, background checks don't work. And that's why, you know, like I say, Why Meadow Died, my book, is very important for parents yeah. to get out there and read it. To learn the facts of what happened it's it's very important and i and i will definitely i'm going to push this to all my followers who 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 want to sit there and say because you know every time there's a shooting i you know poker twitter fuck i yep. hate guns get guns off the street when is this gonna end blah 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 and then when i bring up oh well, let's see. In Chicago this year, 460 have been killed. 290 of them are black. Where do, do they really care why about black Nancy people? Nancy and Chucky. Why isn't Nancy, Chucky, and Swalwell in uh, Chicago marching? Yeah, that's just this year. So okay, uh, that's more. Yeah, I know, it's going on. Yeah. yeah every week, it's, a, it's 20, 30 people a week, I think. Right. But... You know, but that's okay, but they don't look, you know, and what I'm hearing is a lot of these juveniles, they're not giving them backgrounds, right. you know, wh- when these things happen. So you're setting them up for failure. Yeah. That's what happens with uh, with juveniles. If you don't hold them accountable when they're young, they end up staying in the system. Look, and it's a big problem. It's the truth. And, you know, like, I, I have no problem yep. saying this. When I was growing up, if I did something wrong... If my dad pulled that belt out and I started screaming, running to the room, and my my hands would get welted up because I didn't want my bit. But you you got to yeah. discipline your kids. And now it's like uh, yeah, and if it's, it's like, not going on at home, right? That's school, exactly. You know? But you know that's the problem. You know, I know from meeting with uh, you know a lot of people in law enforcement right. that's been in their whole life. Mm-hmm. If you don't get these kids when they're juveniles. They end up staying in the system forever. Uh, You know what I mean? Uh, And and it's a sad thing 
uh, but the Democrats think that it's racist when you hold people accountable. Yeah. So and, it's it's a problem. I think it's the opposite when you don't hold any I, people accountable. I agree You're with setting you. them up for failure as adults, and, and they just don't see it. I agree with you, and uh, you know, when I, I I'm sure the same with you. When I when I was you know being brought up, my dad told me. Nothing is free in life. If you want to be successful, you got to work hard in life. Where the Democrats are, they're trying to push the narrative of you're a victim. You're, uh, uh, you, uh, white people have white privilege and you, it's unfortunate that you're born black and you're a victim and you can't make it in life. And that's why you need us to help you. That's basically what they're saying, which is and then look at people that are very successful. They want to tax the shit out of them yeah. and for working hard their whole lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they made it, that's the, Amer- that's what America is about working yeah. hard and making it, you know, every kid, you know, has uh, has an opportunity. You know, go go. Any kid that learns a trade right now mm-hmm. could make six figures. I don't Absolutely, care, you know, learn any trade, and you're going to make six figures a year. You don't need college. To Andy, make over I, 000. I was learn, living in a learn mobile how to home. be a plumber, install windows, electric, yeah. plumbing, handyman, and making six figures. I was living in a mobile home in 1993, uh, two, paying two hundred dollars a month uh, for the mobile home park the mobile home was about the size of my bathroom in my house you know i worked my ass off i found a trade i was good at and i worked and where i would play 16 hours a day seven days a week and i would just work 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 and and i and i made it big you know but then i had a lot of bad things happen to me and i i could relate with victim mentality because once i had this serious injury for three and a half years i was blaming everybody in the world World, including the man upstairs for how can this happen to me and that was my downfall once i realized to stop being the victim and start being the victor my whole life changed yep. and 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 the message the democrats are giving out of you're the victim and bill all these people all right. are evil because they've cool. been successful is not the, how you should be teaching your kids or teaching our our public you know yeah, they- no, you got to get out there. I tell, uh, I always tell my my kids are hard workers, and you know if you set goals, and all you got to do now is learn a trade, mm-hmm. and you're going to be uh, you'll be going to be fine. Yeah, be, there's uh, one there's one thing that that I want to just I want to address, and it's something that I'll never forget on my mind, and I know it's something you'll never forget is the day of the, that your daughter was murdered when you were looking for yeah. her. And you pulled up and you happen to have a Trump 2020 shirt on. You yep. were eviscerated in the mainstream media yep. and in the pub. Yeah, they blamed me. And they called, they said so many horrible things about you and your daughter. And um, and this is coming from the yep. love tolerant yep, left, the ones fault. who love everyone. That's love, love, fault. love, unless you don't, you disagree with them. And I tell people all the time, you know, hate Trump if you want. If you don't like what he says, if you don't like how he talks, that's fine. But what are the Democrats putting forward on policies that's going to make our schools safer, that's going to make more money in people's pocket? What are their policies? And they don't have any. You know, give me an argument. They do have a policy. I'm going to tell you what their policy is. Their policy is to push for more leniency, more leniency. That what created the shooting in Parkland, Mm -hmm. they want to push it into schools more. It's on their website. You can look up Joe Biden's website, Elizabeth Warren. They're for uh, for, uh, for implementing policies of not holding children accountable, for not suspending, not expelling. And all those all those are uh, on paper. Wow. Yeah, it's all. and, And President Trump ended it. You know, yeah. he rescinded these policies that created this mess in the first place. Yeah. Like California, you know, whoever's listening, if yeah. you have uh, Democrats listening, because that's yeah. a Democrat run state. Yeah. It's illegal to suspend disruptive children. Wow. That's the law in Florida, in California. And it started and, and it's that way in Broward. And it's in uh, major cities throughout the country. And on Biden's website, on Elizabeth Warren. Uh, they want these policies. They want to enforce it more into schools. And probably they'll threaten, just like Obama did, 
threaten to cut off federal funding if you don't participate in these policies, uh, you know, that they want you to, where you don't suspend, you don't arrest. Uh, and, and and it is going on throughout the country. So parents have to smarten up, not not look. Look at this as a partisan issue. Mm-hmm. Look at it as a safety issue and put your kids safety first. Exactly. Don't just think you're going to vote a Republican or Democrat. Vote for what your kid what's going to make your kids safe. Like I, my daughter would be alive if I put her in private school. Right. Like every other kid in the country. Send and your kid to private school and you don't have to worry about it. Because they don't have these policies. And if you they notice... Don't, they don't have violent kids. The, if you noticed uh, at Elizabeth Warren's rally the other day, uh, African-American parents went after Elizabeth Warren because they go, well, you sent your kids to private school. Why can't I? And, of course, she lied and said she never sent her yep, kids. She lied. I, yeah. said, I put that out in a tweet. Yeah. And, and, and she's for those policies, but she sent her kids to school whether they don't have those policies of violent kids in of school. Of course. Because private schools don't participate in those type of policies. Yeah. And so, you know, they're just hypocrites. I don't give a fuck that President Trump tweets dumb shit. I mean, do I wish he didn't? Well, of who course. cares? Look at yeah. yeah, we all, you know, he's a real person. I've met him a few times already in the right. last year. He's a real guy. He loves his country. Right. But, you know, he's not he's not a career politician. And a right. lot of the country isn't used to that. Right. I respect the guy for talk, talking what's on his mind. Right. And he puts our country first and us up, the people of the country. He's fighting for us. He doesn't have to deal with you should see the shit that he has to deal with every day with oh, his news, with these uh, with these reporters. You know, they, they they're just relentless on him oh. all day long. You know, he could do 500 great things for the country. The one time he, he says one thing. You know, they're right. all over the one negative thing, but they overlook the 500 positive things. Absolutely. They don't give him credit for anything. For anything. So, you know, he's got his hands full. And, he, you know, the some of the me and you are used to guys like that. You know, we grew up with them. Yeah. A lot of people aren't. I, I'm OK with the way the guy acts. You know, yeah. I don't have a no, pro, no problem with him at all. I, I respect him. He's not a real he's not a typical politician. And that's why a lot of people don't like him and they can't relate to him. But the bottom line is. Look at the, you know, what's been done in the country. Right. Look what's been do- done on the border. Look what's been done with Israel. Right. Look what's been done with our uh, trade policies with Canada, Mexico, China. Right. You know, or all these things that are going on that never wouldn't even wouldn't even we never even would have heard of these things if right. if another politician got elected. And when people say he's a fraud, he's a phony, I, I my answer to them is he's been saying the same things for forty years. Since the age, yeah, and he, the guy just means well. He 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 put these policies. He formed the federal school safety commission because everyone okay. says, "So what did the president do for school safety?" Mm-hmm. He formed a commission with over a hundred recommendations in it to make schools safer. Okay, he did more. His administration did more for the country on school safety than any prior president. And you'll but never and you'll never hear that. Yeah, never hear about it. But never. I know personally because I sat in on it. Right. And he, you know, it doesn't matter what the president does. It's no. all, it's at a local level for right. parents. You've got to be involved at a local. Uh, nobody knows who their school board members are. I no. wouldn't have known if my no. daughter wasn't murdered. You know, the school board members, for instance, in Broward, if you could believe it, the budget's $4.8 billion. Okay. And people who make $30,000 a year are controlling a $4.8 billion budget. Can wow. you imagine that? No. How do you think that's going? How do you think that's going in Broward with the budget? Uh, I agree. I think I'm going to be getting in a, out of range. You so got parents, it, buddy. For your listeners, I really need you to go, go use my book as a manual to oh. help you. Uh, it's Why Meadow Died. Go out and read it. Give it to your school, your kid's teacher, okay? And, 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 and use it as a manual to make sure you're not putting your kid in a guy put my daughter you got it buddy and have a great weekend thanks for uh All right. coming you in you too mike and i'll take you okay bye-bye all right got it mike take care bye-bye the mouthpiece okay everyone i hope you enjoyed episode 27 of the mouthpiece this week stay tuned next week we are going to have a special poker playing guest next week i can't give it away but it should be good And we are going to talk about uh, what's been going on in the poker world. 
So I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll talk to you next week on The Mouthpiece. The Mouthpiece.